Hey everyone, my name is Haley and this is my first case study presentation for EDU 503 Sports Law. Um, and the case I decided to analyze comes from chapter one of the book and it deals with the antitrust law. And according to the text, this law centers around the issue of competitive markets. Uh, so basically these laws exist to regulate the intention of businesses and to be sure that they have the consumer um, at the best interests in mind. So typically antitrust laws exist as part of the Federal Trade Commission Act. Um, and the text, our text states that the, these laws were enacted to protect markets from unlaw, unlawful restraints on trade and from activities such as price fixing um, and the formation of monopolies. And we likely only know about the antitrust laws surrounding federal laws like the Sherman Act um, and the Federal Trade Commission Act, but there have actually been several issues of antitrust in regards to sports over the years. Um, and so that's what we're going to discuss um, with this first case. So it's always important to start with a little bit of background information, and in this case, um, it's important to note that the, co the court first determined that the NBA is a multi-employer unit comprised of 29 teams and the national organization. So in this specific case, the plaintiff is the Chicago Professional Sports Unlimited, or Sports Limited, excuse me, the Chicago Bulls and the WGN and the defendant is the NBA. And basically, the cause of action for the lawsuit um, is that the Chicago Bulls wanted to sell more broadcasting rights to WGN uh, to feature Michael Jordan, um, the celebrity of the time. Um, but the NBA restricted these rights and imposed fees. So that was in really simple terms. Um, so in a little bit more detail, um, the Chicago Bulls wanted to sell 30 games to WGN to broadcast to their local market, um, but the NBA restricts this to 15 or 20 games depending on how many of those are sold to a national broadcasting station. Um, and the Bulls were willing to pay more money per game um, to allow WGN to broadcast them. It was like something crazy, like 138000 um, but anyways, in 1992, the Bulls um, claimed that the NBA violated the antitrust laws, but the NBA argued that it was single firm and had the right to restrict the licensing rights. The NBA asserted title to the copyright interests arising from the games and transferred all of the rights to NBC in a 1993 contract. Um, and this contract permits each club to license the broadcast um, of its games, and so through the restriction on Superstation's broadcast um, to limit it to the local markets. Um, but the Chicago Bulls argued that they have the right to sell their broadcast to any television station. Uh, and they claim that they shouldn't be limited to non-Superstations. Um, and furthermore, they argued that the tax imposed by the NBA was excessive. So this case actually lasted more uh, then six years, and it was tried in many different courts, um, and there were four different opinions that were issued, but the Seventh Circuit ruling upheld the NBA's ability to restrict the terms, uh, the teams, excuse me, the teams to broadcast the games um, on superstations outside of the league's agreement with NBC. So the, the Bulls and WGN settled with the NBA, and the agreement allowed the Bulls and WGN to broadcast 41 games, uh, but only on the local WGN station. And they agree, agreed to split the advertising revenue for the games equally 50-50 um, with the NBA. This is where the background information that I shared in the beginning comes into play um, because the district court held that the NBA was not a single entity because the NBA and its member teams did not have the same interests um, in, in this case. So really, uh, in the end, I feel as though this case um, did little to fundamentally alter the landscape of sports broadcasting, right? Um, as new technologies are developed and ways in which we, fan we the fans, gain access to sports coverage, it's shifted, we're streaming it, um, all these different things. Um, so, but it's really failed to resolve the 
the age-old question of how to accurately classify um, a sports league against antitrust purposes.